Hi, we're back with the 6.5 and we are talking cloud security uh, with Google. Gosh, Dan, it's great to see you. I feel like uh, we're just popping all over the world and it's it's great to get back in the seat here and talk with some great content. And it's crazy. Security is just security. We always say is important as long as I've been in this industry, but it just keeps keeps getting uh, more important as the threats uh, rise. But it's great to see you, buddy. Yeah, you know, I think what's happening is we are in an era of generative, synthetic data, data exponential growth. Companies are trying to traverse borders. They're trying to do business all over the world. They're running more applications than ever before. And of course, in the you know era of the 2020s and beyond, we've now implemented a whole lot of bring your own device and multiple device and I think with all these things kind of happening at once, it's created a whole new set of challenges for businesses. And by the way, Pat, don't underestimate the pressure that boards and CEOs are putting on IT departments now exactly. that they know they're only one breach away from some serious damage. And this can be short term and monetary, and this can also be long term and reputation. That's right. Boards of directors. Uh uh, are now being held uh, to account. And I think we just saw a CISO uh, as well that uh, there's uh, there's scrutiny on. But uh, with that, let's introduce our guest uh, from Google Cloud. Jeff, it's great to see you. Welcome to the 6.5. Uh, first time here and hopefully not the last. Exactly. Yeah. Long time listener, first time caller. So uh, <laughs> good to meet you, Dan and Pat. Oh, that's nice. Really appreciate you joining us, and uh, you've joined an esteemed group of very thoughtful people that we bring on to the to these episodes. Oh, Insiders on the road, <laughs> and now it's just gotten a little bit better, Jeff. So, uh, listen, you know, give us a little bit of a backgrounder. Um, you know, talk about kind of Google Cloud Security's overall approach uh, to security, intelligence, SecOps cloud give us the whole kind of picture in a nutshell all right yeah the whole shooting the shooting match so when i think about it we're kind of we're focused really in three big areas um so one is on the intelligence side and one of the beauties about being google is we see lots of the internet traffic and that intelligence got a lot better with the acquisition of mandiant and, and so i think we, we have this really unique visibility into the latest breaches, what the most sophisticated attackers are doing. And so that, that's like a core of like, how do we take that threat intelligence and weave it across? And we really kind of focus on two places to then bring that into. So one's in the security operations space. Uh, it's just been an area that we've been very really active in, in terms of acquisitions. Um, Chronicle's kind of the core platform there. And, and we've been spending the last few years bringing in SIM functionality, integrating some of the manual capabilities on that side. And the last one's really just kind of core cloud security. You know, so one of the big focuses for us is how do we make sure that Google Cloud is the most trusted cloud platform. And so a lot of the time that we spend is on, you know, foundational platform capabilities um, around how do we make sure that as customers bring their workloads and data to the cloud, that they're really, really well protected. And then I think that the big thing over the past, you know, year or so has been then you're taking AI and infusing that across each of those areas. Yeah, it was interesting uh, for for years. People, you know, were saying, "Oh my gosh, the cloud, uh, we can't go there; it's not secure." And then, as the you know nation state budgets, as ransomware as a service, uh, hacking as a service, uh, I, I don't hear uh, CISOs or, or quite frankly, uh, uh, many people in IT saying. The cloud isn't secure. It takes huge budgets uh, to make that uh, to make that work. Um, yeah. Some of the th one of the things that uh, Dan and I and our companies ha have been covering, obviously, is generative AI, right? I mean, yeah. uh, and yes, we know it wasn't invented uh, uh, nine months ago. Uh, uh, Google, I uh, actually had some of the seminal papers uh, on 100%. it uh, on it years ago, but but we've seen generative AI as looked through a what is the business benefit. You know the efficiencies that it can provide, uh, closer proximity with our customers to be able to drive uh, our revenue. But can you talk a little bit about what's not being talked about enough? I think is what does it mean uh, from a uh, from a security point of view? It, it's it's almost like as if the hackers uh, utilize uh, machine learning, AI, machine learning, deep learning, and even generative AI 
there have to be different types of defenses uh, yeah. that, to come in and 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 combat that. Yeah, I'm, I'm a, we're in a really interesting time of anyone building enterprise infrastructure, even just technology products. I think you know the application of generative AI, both on the attacker side and the defender side, is actually yeah. something that's really we're in a, a very interesting point in time. You know, having done this for you know more than two decades, I'm very excited about the application of it in both frames. And so the way I think about it is, you know, I think it's early to understand kind of the attacker view. Um, right. They're, I would say, you know, they're, they're businesses essentially, you know, at least outside of the nation state. And so, you know, they'll look at this as, you know, how can this make them more efficient in the types of attacks they can perpetrate? Can they be better at things like spear phishing, et cetera? Um, but we've also spent a lot of time on the, how we can utilize it from a defender perspective. And I'm really excited about that. And kind of three big categories that we see the utilization of it. So one is around threats. Um, you know, it's not going to stop zero days, but can we use generative AI? We, we talk about, can we stop patient one? So yeah. patient zero happens, but how can we quickly understand what's going on and then you know inoculate the rest of our customers' environments with that knowledge, with that intelligence and using generative AI to really make that happen quickly? Second is just around the toil. Unfortunately, you know, cybersecurity folks spend a lot of time day to day doing reasonably repetitive tasks. And, and they can't like, respond to literally a fraction of the percent 100%. of the alerts. Exactly, exactly. So the, how do you you know, find the needle in the haystack, reduce just the, the stuff that is needs to be done, but it's things that can be automated. And we're finding in certain cases, generative AI is really, really good at that. And then last one's around talent. You know, I, I've never met a CISO that says, you know, hey, I've got all the talent I need in the security space and it's easy to retain folks, et cetera. So you know, how can we use generative AI to allow you know, less senior cybersecurity, you know, analysts do more and more up, you know, higher level jobs. And then a lot of the more senior ones really focus on the things that are most important. So those are kind of like, at least the themes that we're really focused on and we're getting really good resonance in terms of the use cases we're building out with our customers. Yeah, T cubed. Is that right? Exactly. Yeah. Toil we do like talent. our alliteration occasionally. So no, yeah. I like it. I might uh, I might lift it and uh, use it. No, I'm just kidding. I'll give you attribution. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, Jeff, I mean, generative AI and the scale of this certainly is is being implemented and delivered a lot faster than it can be possibly secured. I mean, you'll argue that. I'll argue that. Yeah, we, that. We can discuss. Let's yeah, talk yeah. about that. But this is what, where I want to go because. What I guess I'm saying is, you know, the problem with a lot of the times is is every time we come up with great technology to secure, there's someone on the other side. And that's why this has sort of always been a cat and mouse. Spy it, versus spy. 100%. So, 100%. Yeah. So I'm, I'm happy to be proven wrong that we can completely bottle in the generative AI threat. But I think we know why the number of breaches that are going to take place. In your case, hopefully I'm not on Google Cloud. Um, that there's always going to be risk. There's always going to be risk of penetration. And then the new the surface DPT area, new you know, control that folks are going to try to bypass. Yeah, it's substantial. And while the generative stuff is cool and it's fun and it's interesting and it's definitely going to change the uh, calculus for how uh, this is done, um, SecOps is probably quietly one of the big winners of not just of what security is concerned about, but also of utilization of AI. Right, yeah. because it's, it's not a lot. It's not always about this, you know, really futuristic generative capabilities, which is becoming more and more not future and now. But it's also about the ability to quickly to decipher from hundreds, thousands, or more of real threats, getting down to the very few, yeah. figuring out yeah. what stream work streams can be automated. So you've made a lot of progress in this area. You know, uh, Chronicle uh, with the integration of Mandiant is a good, for instance. Um, give us a little bit of an update as it relates to you know the security ops strategy because i think this coupled with observability are a couple of the trends that have really gotten momentum this year um and google's got a role to play here it seems yeah no 100 i mean look we um you kind of talked about like you know all the data the nice thing about security operations is in a lot of ways it's a big data problem and so you think about you know how do you index search 
vast amount of data it's pretty we're pretty good at google at that like foundational element and that's one of the things i think it's really allowed us to make a lot of progress in this space is that at the core level we've got a set of technologies that are just really really well suited for doing you know looking at large amounts of data like very very high scale very very quickly with a really like amazing economic value on top of that in terms of the price point that we can deliver this capability relative to other you know, older technologies in the market and so you know for me what if i think through kind of the this you know we started you know with this kind of core capability set and around you know how do we ingest index search etc the next steps have really been the around how do we then start bringing and i talked about threat intelligence in the beginning how do we start to infuse the threat intelligence the visibility that we have and this is where mandy is so exciting you know the fact that you know they get really the newest freshest ttps attacker behaviors etc and then you know really beginning to infuse that capability set into our core security operations platform chronicle and so that that does a, a really set of amazing things just in terms of taking it away from customers I think one of the things I always struggle with is the stork has been very much kind of a do-it-yourself type model. You, know, you get a SIM, you write your queries and rules, and you're kind of orchestrating a lot of that. What we want to do is how do we infuse the intelligence that Google and Mandiant have in that platform? And yeah, of course, customers can take that and continue to extend, but at least as a baseline, how can we bring a lot of those capabilities on top of that? And then, you know, in in addition to that, you know, then we have all the abilities around your you know, how do we automate response? And, you know, so we, we bought a, a, a SOAR tool that really we've done an amazing job of thinking of integrating that in and really almost kind of changing the, the way that you operate in a, in a modern security operations. It's really about hey, all these things. The platforms found all these things, thanks to our threat intelligence, thanks to our scale, et cetera. Then it's really about how can we help you remediate that as quickly as possible? And and so, you know, I'm really excited at the, the traction we've been able to get. And, and one of the things that we're seeing, an example of, I think, kind of all the different pieces pulling together is this capability we call CyberShield. Um, you know, we talked about it this earlier this fall at Next, and this kind of brings together all the pieces of what we've been doing. So, you know, we're, we're, we're doing is we're going into large governments. And you think about a typical government, lots of different departments varying levels of security expertise across all of those and and so we bring in as we bring in chronicle it's really proven to be the only tool that scales to you know you think of a, a government that has all these different you know um you know different here's the defense department and the treasury and you know home you know the healthcare systems etc so it scales to that infuses the Mandiant technology. So we bring in Mandiant services as part of that to help them upscale. And really kind of, we call it, it kind of brings a overall solution that combines kind of the best aspects of what we have uh, across all of Google there. Now, I love that. And I, I got to tell you, I, I, my firm, you know, wrote about Mandiant and, and, and Chronicle and yeah, uh, Google doesn't make a lot of acquisitions, but when it does, uh, you make them, you make them count. It's been good to yeah. see. Yeah, it was, uh, I mean, yeah. that's a good example though, too. Just kind of the speed at which we've been able to do things. Um, like breach analytics, which was, you know, hey, Mandy, it sees a new thing during one of their breach uh, breach investigations. We've integrated that into Chronicle, so now in less than half an hour, if they identify a new IOC as part of a, a, a breach response. We are now able to then every customer, every Chronicle customer running Mandiant Breach Analytics is right. now protected from that. So yeah, sorry. So um, I know that I don't need to relay your own company history uh, <laughs> back to you, but Google has been doing this cloud thing for a long time. And hey, you happen to work for Google Cloud, and before it was cloud, it was web in 1998. Uh, we didn't call it the cloud then. Yeah, uh, but. We really haven't talked uh, a whole lot about the cloud. I mean, I know the services you've talked about are in the context of cloud services that you're that, that you're offering it. But uh, let's talk let's talk about cloud. How does 
security specifically relate to uh, the cloud? And I think that might be in yeah. deference to on-prem or the edge or, or, or devices or, or, or things like that. Yeah, no, happy to. It was interesting earlier you were in the intro talking about your know, folks moving to cloud and like the, the thing about the security. One of the great things I, I, we are able to invest in security to protect Google Cloud and frankly Google, like the same investment. Exactly. And, and I was gonna say, like nobody, you don't talk enough about that you literally have planet scale uh capabilities here. And I understand why that's not the first thing out of your mouth because you wanna, you know, it, it's important they know you're all about enterprise, but you get a have to get a just a ton of experience and and, and know-how from what's going on with all the other parts of Google. Yeah, and the fact that we're attacked constantly, and, and so yes, and, and that's where I, I think, I think you know we we've, we've crossed this bridge where cloud is now fundamentally safer than on prem, because you know we are we build our own security chips, we build all our own hardware, like we we are able to invest in a level of security that no sane regular organization would be able to do do so, and and we can do that because we're. It's all things we need to do to protect Google and all of our Google Cloud customers. So it, it, the way that we can amortize the, the economies of scale of cloud, I think, are really interesting. And so, so that's so that's kind of step one. You know, step two is you know, a lot of this. You know, how do we change the dynamic of the responsibility that customers bear when they move to the cloud around securing their environment versus what we bear? And so, yeah, a lot of our effort has been how do we move the Google responsibility higher and higher. And, and look, you get that from using managed services, the fact that we deliver all our products as a, you know, software as a service. We've spent a lot of time around how do we ensure by default these services come out of the gate configured with like what we think are best practices from a security perspective. On top of that, we've leveraged our security command center functionality, which helps. It, it, it does like the, the standard things in terms of posture management and, and making sure you don't have you know bad misconfigurations. but. You know, because we operate on Google Cloud, like we we are cloning the memory running in our VMs uh, to then be able to go and search for crypto mining, you know, root kits, boot kits, et cetera, because right. we didn't want to slow it. We don't want to put an agent and slow down the VM. And we we're uniquely positioned to be able to have that visibility and create that type of environment to protect our Google Cloud customers. And no attacker can disable it. Like there's nothing, there's no agent to disable. And so like we're able to do things that are like unique in terms of how we can help protect customers that are running on Google Cloud that no yeah. third party can. And so with that type of stuff, you know, we just we rolled out this attack path simulation capability mid-year. And we're multiple times a day computing like where you let's say you come up with a finding, here's a vulnerability or misconfiguration. We talked about like how many alerts and all the, the 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 number of things that you know we tell our customers to do better and this, the list is too long so we use that to understand which of those is the most you know provides the easiest path for an attacker to go to get to core data or resources within your environment and we use that to, to, to declare what we call an attack exposure score that helps customers prioritize what they're yeah. doing. And then on top of that, we're doing all the generative AI stuff. And, you know, I think the interesting thing there is you know, we started and I talked about, you know, the, the, the TTT, you know, the, you know threats, ta toil and talent. We, you know, because we're on Google, we have our own, you know, Google bu builds TPUs. We have our own, you know, we've done all this work on large language models. We have Vertex AI in the model garden. So like all of that, we can build on top of that just as a starting point. And then what we realized is you know, the large language models don't do as well from a security specific types of things. And so we actually did training to create our own right. version of a large language model that's been trained on security data, mandate threat intelligence, virus total intelligence, chronicle you know, data, et cetera not using any customer data, but like all the other things that we have within Google. And so these are all the types of things that we can bring to bear to customers that are, are running on Google Cloud. And you're gonna see in the not too distant future, some of this coming to other clouds as well. And I think you just, I think you just very nicely did a bit of a, of a rundown of the differentiation. And one of the keys being Google's 
Google Cloud's provenance plus Google Cloud security provides yeah. a very robust set of solutions based on the number one customer being Google. And so I always think that's a tremendous story is when you say, we trust this technology so much, we would run our own business on it. Yeah. So this is how we protect ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Jeff, I want to thank you so much for taking some time here with Patrick and I on the 6.5. It's been great sitting down. Thanks for uh, running us through all that. No, my pleasure. Thanks so much, Sam Pat. All right, everybody, hit that subscribe button and check out all the episodes that we've done across the Google Cloud team and across the 6.5 landscape. But for this episode and for Patrick and myself, we've got to say goodbye. See you all later.